Mounts are one of the most prized possessions in World of Warcraft. No matter if you are a person that blows ass at the game, or you are a legend when it comes to an online MMORPG, we can all agree that we like to ride mounts that look menacing, powerful, or even like a chicken. Some people will grind for weeks, months, or even years for a mount that may never drop, while others are tempted to spend up to a million gold for a specific mount because they just said fuck it, I'm not running this bullshit raid anymore. So that's why today, I'm here with a video showing you guys 10 rare mounts to get in World of Warcraft. Number 10 is the blue drake that you can acquire by defeating Maligos in 10 or 25 man normal mode from the Eye of Eternity, which is a raid located in the Borean Tundra. According to Wowhead, however, it states that the drop rate on 10 man mode is 4%, while the drop rate on 25 man mode is only 2%. I don't really know how accurate this information is because I noticed Wowhead fucking me in the ass countless times before. For example, I searched up what dropped in the big bag of pet supplies that you can get from your menage raid and your garrison, and it only listed a few of the battle pets that that the bag actually dropped when I actually got a lot of other pets that weren't even listed on the website. So there could be a possibility that these percentages may be inaccurate, but who knows, it may be right. Regardless though, it is a blue drake to add to your collection of drakes, and it's also a good start for your collection if you plan on getting the emerald drake that requires for you to collect all of these drakes that are currently listed below. Number 9 is the Reigns of the Anixian Drake, that has a 1.39% chance of dropping off of Anixia on 10 man mode, and a 1.3% chance of dropping on 25 man mode. This mount can be acquired by defeating Anixia in Anixia's Lair in Duswala Marsh, and to be honest, it is probably my favorite of all the regular drakes, just simply due to the fact that it has like a sense of uniqueness when it comes about it. Bronze Drakes, Blue Drakes, yeah sure, they're alright, but the Nixian Drake is my favorite out of all of them, not only because it just looks menacing in general, but because it also belongs to the Black Dragonflight, which is like completely badass. With it having a 1.3% drop chance, it's obviously a must-have for any rare mount collector. Number 8 is the Slade Primordial Direhorn, which drops off of the Zandalari Warbringers, which patrol the Dreadwaste, Karsarang Wilds, Kunlai Summit, the Jade Forest, and also Townlong Steps. This mount has a 5% chance of dropping from these NPCs, and they also have a chance of dropping the Jade Primordial Direhorn or Amber Direhorn as well. These NPCs back in early MOP were pretty challenging to solo, and it would usually take about 2 to 3 people to kill them because they were so resilient and they actually had mechanics which required you to use your brain in order to not be raped, but it should be no trouble for you on your level 100 nowadays. The Warbringers still stand still at their location so you don't have to worry about them moving around or away from their spawn points, but I can say that if you have anything to worry about, it's probably going to be the competition. I don't know how often these guys get killed nowadays, but I do know that back in Mr. Pandaria, these guys got farmed as soon as they spawned, so do keep that in mind. Or you can get ganked while you were farming them, so I, I, I do remember that. I got fucking ganked when I had one like 20%, and man, that, that was shitty, but on to the next mount. Number 7 is the Reigns of the Raven Lord, which drops off of Anzu in the Sethic Halls, and for this you need to set it to Heroic Mode, because it won't drop for you at all in Normal Mode. This means that you can only run it once daily per character, since you will be locked to it after you kill a boss. The mount itself has a 1.6% chance of dropping, and the dungeon is located in Terracar Forest in Akendun. The best way to come out here now is probably just to take the portal from Shrine of Two Moons or Shrine of Seven Stars to Shatrath, or you can go from Stormwind or Orgrimmar to Outlands, but be sure that you pick the right portal in your capital city, or else it might teleport you back into the Blasted Lands where you have to go into Draenor again. Number 6 is the good old Sunhide Gronling, a mount that I actually sat on my ass for probably around 14 hours uh, in total to farm. I didn't sit there for 14 hours in one session, this is probably the total amount of time that I devoted to getting this mount, but I was lucky enough to have it drop in a 4 hour farming session because I know people who have spent days and even weeks on end trying to farm this mount, and I don't, I don't know how you do that, I mean like what the hell do you just like fucking shit in a cup or something, but I, I don't know, that, that, that must suck ass. Now, the Sunhide Gronling drops from a rare named Poundfist that spawns in 5 locations within Gorgron. Poundfist takes anywhere from 40 hours to 150 hours to farm, although some servers have been recorded that it took them a maximum of 180 hours for the rare to even spawn, so don't expect this guy to just shit himself out of the blue and appear for you. However, I did have a friend that just simply went to Blackrock Foundry to raid, and he found Poundfist all alone and just nuked him, and he already had the mount. So that was kind of fucked up of him. But when the rare spawns, he will have a 99% chance to drop the mount. So it's not 100%. So this means that if you are just extremely lucky, and honestly if Blizzard just hates your guts, then you unfortunately might be the 1% that will not get it when this guy drops loot for you. 
Back in the early world of Draenor, there were dozens of groups up farming for this rare, but now you will be lucky enough even if to see a couple groups on the pre-made finder. Number 5 is the Reigns of Poseidus that drops off of Poseidus. This mount also has a 99% chance of dropping, and it is an extremely rare mount that I have only seen one person riding on in my server. Why is this mount so rare? Well, because of a variety of reasons. First of all, this rare spawns every 72 hours according to what most of the information states. Some people have said though, however, that it does spawn every 48 hours, but other people have recorded a minimum of 72 hours, so regardless, it doesn't spawn often. And also, the NPC spawns in Vashir, so a lot of people don't tend to go out to Vashir because not only is the zone pretty inconvenient to even go to, especially if you don't have the portal unlocked in your capital city, but it's also not the most popular zone in the game either. For this mount farming, I recommend that you have two add-ons. One is called NPC Scan and the other is called NPC Scan Overlay. NPC Scan will alert you whenever you are in close proximity with a rare creature, and this proximity is going to be based off of the hitbox of the creature and of course how far you are away from it. NPC Scan Overlay will show you the points of which the rare spawns, and also the patrol pathways it takes if the NPC does not stand in a set position. This mount can be used in any aquatic environment, so unlike the Vashir seahorse that you may only summon in Vashir, this mount can be summoned and ridden in any water environment in the game. Poseidus is also bind when equipped, so this means that you can in fact sell it on the auction house, and I have actually seen it go for about 500k back when Cataclysm was out, so it's definitely a good way to make money if you can actually get it. Number 4, we have the Reigns of the Blue Proto Drake, which drops off of Scotty the Ruthless in Utgard Pinnacle on Heroic Mode. This mount has a 1.15% of dropping from this boss, and like Anzu, you can only kill Scotty once per day per character because you will get a lockout when you kill a boss in a heroic dungeon. As of August 26, 2015, Scotty the Ruthless also has a very slight chance to drop the reins of the blue proto Drake in time walking dungeons as well, even with the loot being set to personal loot. Standing at number 3, we have the Reigns of the Thundering Onyx Cloud Serpent which drops from a rare named Hulan in the Timeless Isle which is located in Pandaria. According to Wowhead, the longest respawn time noted was approximately 1 hour and 20 minutes, but the shortest recorded spawn time for Hulan was 30 minutes on the dot. So the good news is, is that it doesn't take him days to spawn like Poundfist and Poseidus, but that's where the bad news ties in. The mount only has a 1% chance of dropping, so whether you really want the mount that badly or not to go all the way out here and farm it, that's up to you. Just keep a note though, that there are still some bloody coin farmers lingering even though Mr. Pandaria is over, so do be aware of that when you go ahead and try to farm this mount on the Timeless Isle. Coming in second to last at number 2, we have the Time Lost Proto Drake, something that I actually haven't attempted to farm just because I know that there's always like a million people waiting to murk his ass the moment the rare spawns. Now this mod spawns in the Storm Peaks and it is technically a rare spawn of another rare spawn. The other rare being a blue dragon named Viragosa. They share the same spawn timer so they can't both be up at the same time, but it's been assumed that there's approximately a 1 in 6 chance that the time lost proto drake will spawn instead of Viragosa. So if you're going to camp this, you better prepare yourself to see a lot of Viragosa. The spawn timer according to what WoWWiki and a lot of what the people on the forums have posted is estimated to be around 12 to 16 hours, however it also depends on how fast the rares in Northrend are being killed. For example, a few years ago, a team of 10 people were trying to farm this mount, and 5 of them were patrolling the storm peaks waiting for the mount, while the other 5 were flying around Northrend trying to kill all of the rares that they could possibly find. They then concluded this theory by stating that ever since they went rare hunting, the spawn times shifted more towards every 4 to 10 hours rather than the normal 12 to 16. Again for this mount, I recommend that you have NPC scanner, NPC scan overlay, and also a plastic bag that you can tie to your leg so you don't shit or piss yourself. Last of all, standing proud and tall at number 1 is the Ashes of Alar which drops from Prince Kael'thas Sunstrider in the Tempest Keep. This mount has a whopping 2% chance of dropping, and when you obtain the mount, it will also give you an achievement for all of you achievement hunters. This mount can occasionally appear on the black market auction house ranging anywhere from 500,000 to even 999,000 gold because people are fucking insane, or it can even be looted from the unclaimed black market auction house containers, although the percentage of how likely it is for them to drop in the containers is not listed or stated. 
I wouldn't take my chances though. I spent 20k on a black market container on my orc warrior and when I actually got it and opened it, I got some alliance braces that I couldn't even use. So it all depends on you. If you have enough gold to buy out the entire black market auction house 10 times over, then go ahead and go for it. But as for me, I'll just stick to running the raids. But that's it everyone, 10 rare mounts to get in World of Warcraft. I wish you all luck in your journey on acquiring these mounts, and if you feel as though there should be another mount that could have been included in this video that isn't, comment it down below and I will include it in the next part of the series, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching for your endless support, peace out, take care, have a good one, and good luck farming these mounts.